All right. Hello, everybody. We're going to make some pizza dough. I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to get settled, get their ingredients out, and then I'll be back. I'm going to wash my hands. Step one. Ooh, all right. All right, we're going to get cracking in about 45 seconds. So if you're watching this feed, we are making pizza dough. My name is Scott. I'm coming to you live from my apartment in Brooklyn, where I am staying socially distant from everyone, even the pizza delivery person. It's because... We don't need a pizza delivery person. We have all it takes at home to make our own delicious pizza. I'm gonna walk you through the process. I'm gonna show you how to make pizza dough. And if you are following along, and if you have questions, jot your questions down in the comment section. I will be answering live questions as they come up. So please feel free to jump in there. In fact, right now, Everyone who's hanging out, I want you to go ahead and write the name of your favorite pizzeria in the comments section. This way I know where you're coming from, and everybody else knows if you've got good taste. So go ahead and do that. I am going to get myself ready for pizza making. Had a nice little bow on my apron. All right. So if you're going to be following along, we will be using flour, salt, water, yeast, and a little bit of oil. The recipe that I'm going to show you tonight does not have any sugar in it, but I will let you know when and how that sugar gets added. I'm sure you might have some questions because the way that I'll present this to you is not necessarily the typical method for making pizza dough at home. I'm actually going to show you something closer to a pro method of this. And that's kind of important. Even though I myself am not coming to you from a pizzeria, I think it's important for me to let you know what, uh, you know, how this thing works. First of all, a little bit of my background. I may have met some of you. I've been to your amazing library multiple times. I've done some live presentations there because I do a lot of work in pizza on the history side and the consulting side. I don't own a pizzeria, but I do a lot of work with pizzerias. Um, I run a company that takes people on tours of famous pizzeria around the five boroughs. It's called Scott's Pizza Tours. I also run a nonprofit called Slice Out Hunger, and that's an organization that we do uh, fundraising for hunger relief organizations all around the United States, and we do that by running pizza-related events and campaigns. And what I mean by that is sometimes we have pizza parties or ticketed events or uh, maybe if pizzerias are, are welcome to donate a dollar for every pepperoni pizza they sell on a certain day to a local um, hunger relief organization or a shelter or other related charity. Right now we have a special campaign going on uh, based on the response to the pandemic. It's called Pizza versus Pandemic. You may have uh, seen it on the Today Show a couple days ago. It was in the New York Times yesterday. Uh, it was posted on my mother's Facebook page multiple times in the past few days. We are raising money through our website, sliceouthunger.org, and then we're sending pizza to hospitals all around the United States. If you want to send pizza to a hospital somewhere in the U.S. or have us send it, really, go to sliceouthunger.org, or you can just go to pandemic.pizza, and you can put in a recommendation and we will send it. I, from this computer that I'm broadcasting from right now, that's the computer that I use to send in hundreds of pizza orders every day. So I'm taking a little break from that to hang out with you all and show you how to make pizza dough. First thing you gotta know, 
Cooking is an art. You know that already. I'm sure a lot of you are great cooks. If you're watching this, you're probably a great cook. Baking is a science. Pizza is both. Pizza is what happens when you cook something as you bake something. And that's important. Historically, pizza is something that was, it's a dough that becomes a bread, as it's a tomato that becomes a sauce, as the cheese that goes from solid to liquid and then congeals again. It's really important to understand that. It's all these, it's all these systems, it's both these things. So when I take you through this process, you really need to keep in mind that even though cooking is a science and and baking is a or baking is a science and cooking is a is an art and pizza is both pizza making is a formula if you want a certain outcome all you have to do is change the variables in the formula there's not one way to make pizza there are infinite ways and that's why the pizzerias that you're, that you're mentioning Coliseo in Port and where in Port Jefferson Station, that and a Sole Mio are. I'm sure, I've never been to those places, but they're totally different. Somebody mentioned Coronet by Columbia at Broadway and 112th Street. Yeah, that place is rocking. Wow, you all have some pretty good situations going on. Keep dropping them in there. Oh, what place on Avenue M? Oh, original on Avenue M. Oh, original pizza. There's the one on Ralph Avenue too. It's not far from where I live. Anyway, back into the mix here. Let's make some dough. If you are playing along, go ahead and write down in the comments, I am making dough or something like that. I'm asking that because in this format, I'm just speaking to a box. I don't know if you need me to slow down or speed up. I'll do whatever I can to make sure that what I'm saying makes sense. In fact, let's start off by I'll show you what I got laying out on the counter right now. Some super, super simple stuff. This is all household stuff, nothing on the pro side, although the method I'll teach you would be more pro. First thing I want to mention is I'm going to be using a kitchen scale. I know not everybody has a kitchen scale. People are used to using cups and spoons and all that stuff. We're not going to use that for this. I will give you translations on what the weight is versus what it is in a cup or a spoon. But the fact of the matter is when you weigh something with a cup or, or when you measure something with a cup or with a spoon, it's not going to be the same every time. So that's why I'm weighing it. So I know that I'm keeping consistent. I'm going to weigh it. I'll give you the measurements. And I can also email this out if you haven't received an email yet from the uh, library. The library will be happy to provide you with more information. If it's something that I haven't given them, I will give it to them. Anything you need to know. Pizza also has nothing to do with secrets. The only secret ingredient of pizza is knowledge. As long as you know what you're doing, there's no secret. What are you going to, I had somebody on a tour once who said, oh, my mother, my grandmother's secret ingredient, don't tell anybody, she puts sugar in the dough. All right, who doesn't? I get it. We're not going to do it today. But, that, you know, boring, come on, we've been there, we've done that. So let's start off. I'm going to be measuring this stuff out and I'll measure it. Well, you know what? I'll give you a little bit of shift in, in where we're positioned because I want you to understand how I'm using this scale. It's not totally common practice everywhere, but I would like to make it so. All right, let's give you a nice low angle. By the way, we're going to make the dough right now. I already made some dough yesterday so I can bake a pizza for you on camera, but this dough is going to be ready tomorrow. Step one, we're starting off with water. I know somebody already said, hey, can you send that Brooklyn water through the Facebook? I wish, but my computer is going to break. In fact, I've already put a piece of plastic wrap on my keyboard because I know when I'm playing with flour in front of the computer, it's a disaster. So we've got a bowl sitting on the scale. I turn on the scale. It zeroes itself out. It's going to ignore the bowl. Great. I'm starting with water. Here's a little trick. Water's got chlorine in it, so we don't get sick. Chlorine doesn't taste good, and it's not good for yeast. So I pour the water into my pitcher in advance. I let it sit out for at least 12 hours. 
the chlorine will dissipate and I'm left with uh, a better water. A little quick tip. I'm starting off with 230 grams of water. That's about one cup. Don't be a fool here. When you're measuring water, always, you know, with a liquid, if you're going to use cups, use a liquid. Don't use the dry cup. They're not the same thing. I'm going to ditch this, though. I'm not using it. Although I love using that for water because then I don't have to wash it. Anyway, I'm starting off with water, and I'm going to do about one cup, which is 230 grams of water. I went a little overboard. I'm going to use my ladle for my sauce. Perfect. Great. Now we got water. No matter what they tell you, the water in New York is not the reason the pizza is good. We've got bad pizza too. You know that. There's great pizza outside of New York, just not a lot of it because we've had it for a long time. New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Long Island. We've had it for a long time. We know what we're doing. Other places that have it for less time, it's there's not a, there's not the same kind of connection to the past, but there's also a kind of a freedom, which is nice. But we're locked in right now. We got 230 grams of water. I start with the water because once I add the flour, you add it slowly so you can gently hydrate. I don't own a dough mixer. I make pizza dough every week. I'm not using a dough mixer because I don't have one. I weighed out in advance 350 grams of flour. That's two and a half cups. The reason I did weigh this stuff out in advance is because I want to slowly add it to the water. I do that slowly because this way I can... I can hydrate a little bit of flour at a time. So as I'm mixing, I'm like slowly adding it in. Come on. What kind of flour am I using? Well, you can use all purpose. Bread flour is even better. I'm using a mixture. And that's because I had a bunch of bags of half used flour. And I wanted to get rid of them. So I'm using a mix just to as a, for demo purposes. I'm eating this tomorrow. But there's a little bit of rye in there. There's a little bit of, use whatever the heck you want. We do a little bit at a time so that it hydrates it evenly. This is, is already weighed out. I don't even need the scale right now. I weighed that out in advance just so I can throw a little bit in. And then take a little break, throw a little bit more. Looks like there's a little bit of whole wheat in there. Cool. By the way, if anybody has any questions about flour or anything, lay it on me. we got plenty of time to chat. There's going to be a resting phase when this dough has to rest for about 15 minutes. We're going to make our sauce, and I can answer questions at that time. This dough is definitely coming together nicely. In about two seconds, I'm going to ditch this spatula. So if you've made pizza bread before, or if you've made bread dough before, rather, bread dough is pretty wet. Pizza dough is pretty dry. So when you're mixing this, it's going to start to feel pretty dry. If it feels too dry for your hands, you just add a little bit of water. Trust the dough. It is going to change the way it feels over time. If it feels a little too dry, it needs it just needs to sit. Don't worry. If you're measuring everything and it feels dry, maybe you're using a type of flour that absorbs a lot of water. They tell you in uh, on the cooking shows and all that to use double zero flour. I don't agree. If you've got a wood-fired oven in your backyard, yeah, use double zero flour. That's fine. It's really good for high temperature. It's not good for low temperature. It's not great for your household oven. My oven, uh, when I use double zero, the dough dries out or the, the, the crust dries out and it stays kind of brittle. 
in white. It's not for me. If you like that, cool. But remember what I said before? Pizza is whatever you want it to be. So those places that you're all mentioning that you like, you have an affinity for them. You might meet someone down the road who doesn't like that style. Fine. We can still all be friends. Or maybe you can't. And I respect that. So look. No dough mixer. Just using the hands. And I'm doing a little dough all over the screen. Great. Doing a little bit of a scrape just to make sure I got everything off the bottom. Now look. Main ingredient with making dough like this is just knowing when to stop and when to wait. You don't have to be physical with it. You don't have to like beat it up. When people say, oh, you need the dough, you gotta put your whole body into it, don't listen to them. The jerks. I just mixed up all this stuff together, flour and water, and this is what I got. Great. I have not yet added yeast, salt, or oil. That's going to happen now. The reason that we don't add it all together is that if the oil covers the yeast, the yeast is never going to get wet. The dough is not going to rise right. If the salt and the yeast go in together, the salt dries out the yeast. It removes water from it. Can't have that happening. We really got to do water and flour first. Let that sit and hydrate for a couple of minutes. And then we're ready to add our yeast. Let that hang out for a couple minutes. And then we're going to go to town with all the other stuff. All right, yeast. Let's talk about it. I don't know what yeast you have at home. I've got like tons of packets of yeast here. I got Active Dry. I got Instant. I've got sourdough starters. I've got Instant with sourdough starter in it. It's crazy. What the heck is the difference? This is the stuff that you've got to put in water first. This is the stuff that you use right away. It's the same exact stuff, but this is each little bit of yeast, which is, it's a fungus. Yeast is an organism. It's alive. It's a fungus. Each yeast cell is covered with a bunch of dead yeast buddies. Gives a kind of a funky flavor. It means that you got to activate it first. But yeast companies were like, wait, why are we activating this? Let's just make it smaller so we can get hydrated quicker and we'll have bread faster. That's what instant yeast is all about. I like this. It's not, it's not a cheat. This is good. This stuff is fine. I, like, I prefer this. We're going to use this in the mix, but I'll tell you how to swap them out. Since this has a bunch of dead yeast in it, you got to use about 25% more of this than this. If your recipe says this, but you got this, decrease it by 25%. Just active, you need more. Rapid, you don't need more. If it says fresh yeast, then that means for every one part of this, you're going to use four parts of the other stuff. For this, it's, it's one third of the amount of fresh yeast. That's confusing. This, don't worry about it. Just We're going to use very, very little yeast. And I'm going to weigh it. Because if I tell you to use a spoon for this, your spoon is heaping, your spoon is not. Let's just weigh it. I want to use between one and two grams. This is going to be used tomorrow. If I want the pizza tonight, I can use the whole bag. I can add some sugar. I can use warm water, make it happen. But I want flavor. The faster the dough rises, the harder it is for your system to deal with. Flour is nothing but starch and carbohydrates. Sugar, complex sugar. Yeast breaks down those complex sugars, turns them into gas. That means your, your dough is able to rise. We're going to let this happen the long way, and it's going to be better. Trust me about this. Let's go to somewhere between one and two. Uh-oh. We're at two right now, but I want to... I'm going to get it a little bit lower. And then I want to show you what two grams of dough of yeast looks like. Oh, we're at
Yeah, one and a half. Great, great, great. Looks like this. It's like a palm full. That's the amount of yeast I want. So this is all little yeast cells. It's fungus. When I add it into my dough, I just want to get it evenly in there. Sprinkle it around and I kind of push it in. Then I turn it over on itself. Sprinkle a little bit more. Turn it over on itself. A little more. You get the idea. Until it's all in the bowl. The good thing about doing this right inside a bowl is I'm not going to lose anything. Now, the kneading technique. At this point, I'm starting to knead the dough a little bit. You want to do it non-aggressively. You just put the heel of your palm into it and push it into itself. I pick it up, I pull it back, I push it down, and I keep doing that. Right now, I'm just trying to get all the yeast spread around. Because next up, salt or oil. You can do salt, then oil, or oil, then salt. Again, it's a formula. It's just going to change your texture of the crust slightly. Salt last is usually gets like a little bit of a crispier crust. There's a lot of clanking go around when I do this, so I usually just stick a towel on the table. This way, I'm not going to make a lot of noise. All right. It's pretty incorporated. Next up, I'm going to do eight to nine grams of salt. It looks like the same amount of yeast. Salt's heavier though, so it looks the same, not the same. I'm going to do the same kind of thing. Now that the yeast is already covered in flour and water, I got this measured out. I can sprinkle a little bit at a time. little bit of salt. little bit of salt. Now you got to tell me, do you like thin crust? Do you like puffy crust? Do you like stretchy crust? What are you into? Let's see if there's any answers over here in the thing. Can you just use whole wheat flour from Emma? Emma, great question. If you use 100% whole wheat flour, it's going to... Hang on. This is flour that I milled earlier today. I've got a flour mill sitting over here. This is whole wheat flour. I like to use it, but not 100% of the, of the dough because bran is very sharp. And the bran that's on the outside of the dough is so sharp that it can prevent gluten from forming. If it prevents gluten from forming, then you get a very dense bread. So 100% whole wheat bread or whole wheat pizza dough, it just tends to be very dense. I personally don't love it. But this is, is about 20% whole wheat. So this is going to be good. It's got some rye in there. It's got all this stuff in there. But yeah, you can do it. It's just, again, it's, a, it's an equation. You do that, and it's going to have an impact. It's not going to have the same texture as like a white flour. How many grams of flour? Oh, that, we did 200 and, 350 grams of flour, 230 grams of water. Done with the yeast, or done with the salt. Salt is also going to tense up the dough. It's going to help it form gluten. So we save that toward the end because it's just all starting to, uh, yeast is starting to activate, it's starting to wake up, and we really didn't want to prevent that from happening. Final thing, olive oil. I'm going to use olive oil. You can use vegetable oil if you want. We're really using very little of it. I say about five grams. Uh, look, I just think like two or three squirts is all you need. I'll show you what five grams looks like. Let's do it in the little.
all my little bowls are green. They all look like olive oil, five grams. Okay, that was four squeezes. Here's five grams. That's it. One little, one little pop. All in the bowl. Now I'm really getting into it. We're almost there. When you do this part, let's give you a good angle. It's not aggressive. Pulling it over itself and pushing it back down. If you want to, if you want your dough to last like four or five days, your water should be cold. If you want to eat it right away, well, I wouldn't ever do that, but if you want to eat it sooner than later, warm water, and then you put it in a warm place to rise. We're not going to do that. I'm making this for tomorrow. I want to show you the real deal way. And then later, maybe I'll tell you the little tips and tricks. You end up kneading the dough like this for about 10 minutes. And I'm making enough dough for you to make two pizzas. This is going to be two pizzas, trust me. And the two, like, you know, 13, 14 inch pizzas. I'm going to bake one of them for you tonight using some dough that I made yesterday. All right, this is almost ready for the final step of kneading, which is when we put it on the table and give it the last few turns. But look, the bowl almost totally cleaned out. Now when you put it onto the table, it's a good idea to put a little bit of flour. Let's use some of this whole wheat that I mentioned before for Emma. But not a lot of flour. I like to do that much. Because the flour is there so you don't stick to it. hey -oh. The flour is there so it doesn't stick to the table. But you don't. You already measured out 350 grams of flour. You want to be careful. You don't want to overdo it. Now it's not quite there yet, because when I stretch it, it's gonna break. You need it until you can pull it and it doesn't break. Or when you push it, it bounces back slowly. You want a smooth surface. And again, the kneading process is like this. Pull it back, push it forward, turn it. Pull it back, push it forward. Does this make sense? I'm doing it in slow motion. I'll pick it up and do it in fast motion. We started 30 minutes ago, and even with all my jib jabs talking, we're, we're at pizza dough. 30 minutes, not that hard. I see some people asking some questions. Is it better to use more than one type of flour? <sighs> Suzanne, it's not better, it's just different. Great, great, really great question. One type of flour is gonna get you one result. If you use it all purpose, it's not gonna be super strong and elastic, it's not gonna hold on to a lot of gas. If you if you use a little bit of whole wheat, it's going to get some characteristics of whole wheat, some nuttiness. It's going to be tasty. But I would never say that 
it's all that there's like a better or worse. Another question came up about cornmeal in the crust. I personally am not into it. It's just not my thing. I don't like it when you put it on the bottom of the pizza. I like it to just be straight up ready to rock. But we're going to make a pizza in like a minute. So, well, 15 minutes. 15 minutes from now, if you need to go and do something for 15 minutes from now, we're making a pizza. That thing right over there is a special pizza oven. I'm gonna make the pizza in that today because I know it's gonna be fast. That's like a fancy pizza oven. I got to work on, I got to work with the people who made it. And so they sent me an oven. But it goes up to 750 degrees, it's crazy. It's like, if you have a backyard grill, that's that's great. That's probably maybe even better. I don't have it, I live in Brooklyn. I There's no outdoor space, I gotta, uh, fire escape. If I go out on that, the building might kick me out. I'm ready to say it. I'm happy with this. It's a little undermixed, but I also know that I used whole wheat in there, so it's not going to get super, super smooth. Uh, plus, it's also going to hydrate a little bit better over the next 15 minutes or so. We need that time to make our sauce. So I feel pretty good about this. Let's put it to bed for a minute. You can put it back in the bowl. Sometimes people oil up the bowl. I don't think you need to. It'll come right out. It'll be fine. Put it right in the bowl. You can put something on top of it. Plastic wrap. People do the damp towel thing. Uh, I just do. It seems even better. Shower cap from a hotel. I just save all the shower caps. I got so many shower caps. I never wear a shower cap in my life. All my dough wears a shower cap. There it is. Let's let this sit for like 15 minutes. Let's make some sauce. Okay, see if we got questions. Pizza stone on charcoal grill. Awesome. You don't even need the stone. If you do it right on the grill, it'll get even more charred and softer. But if you got the stone, go for it. All right, what else we got? Oh, the red oven. Thanks, yeah. It was in this apartment when I moved in. Thanks, I'll take all the credit. Okay, can you go back and tell how much the other types of yeast way behind because I didn't have instant? No problem. So I used instant, which I did two grams. If you're going to do active, three grams. There's seven grams in this package. If you pour this out on the table, Take away like just under a half. Use that. Again, with baking, it's a science, but look, more yeast means it's just going to rise faster. If you're, if you're using more yeast, if you use cold water, it'll slow things down. And when you get into the oven, it should pop up. So it's cause and effect relationship everywhere you go in this. Let's talk tomatoes. Number one, you don't need San Marzano tomatoes. They're good, but usually you buy them, and what it says San Marzano in the can is not really San Marzano. There's a lot of fraud that goes on with that. That's why I always buy uh, California tomatoes. I just I like them. These are these are fancy jarred ones. Why not? Let's just use them. Uh, we're making sauce right now. It'll be done in five minutes. This is just whole peeled tomatoes. I want to make sure everybody knows whole peeled tomatoes, what that even is. These are small ones. I bought the small ones. It's a tomato. I mean, they're all tomatoes. Little baby. They're datarini, little dates. And to make the sauce, it's real easy. We're going to crush it up with our hands. We're not going to cook it. It's going to get cooked in the oven with the pizza. It's going to be fine. Let's do... Um, Let's do a little garlic in the sauce. I got a little trick. I like to do this, especially when I'm teaching kids. 
take a clove of garlic, take a zip top bag, Of course, I need to give it one more smash. <laughs> Skin comes right off, and I'm left with this garlic. This is really fun for kids because you get to take out all your aggression. I haven't seen my friends at school. I'm stuck inside. Blah 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 blah. And just do it with my fist. Smash up the garlic. Now you can. Yeah, you can use. Where'd it go? I got a microplane. You can do this the high-tech way, but we're not going to do it the high-tech way because it's more fun this way. Oh, yeah, baby. Putting in another jar of tomatoes. Now, for every jar of tomatoes, I like to add a little salt. I'm just going to put four grams of salt in there. This is a great thing about the scale. It's zeroed. Just a little bit of salt, four grams. By the way, the salt I'm using, natural sea salt. Here's what you're looking for. Ingredients, sea salt. Look at your salt. There's other stuff in the salt. You don't need it. Ingredients, sea salt. All right, I got a little garlic. I got a little salt. You want to add oregano? You want to add other stuff? Go for it. Be my guest. I'm not going to add that stuff. I'm not interested. I'll, I'll, I'll season the pie when I'm ready to season the pie. Next up, let's do this. Now, wait. You can use an immersion blender or a tomato, a food mill. Hang on. You can use my Aunt Edie's food mill. I don't want to wash it. Hands. The trick with this, you got to hold the tomato under the water. Otherwise, it's going to splatter everywhere. I don't know if you've caught this before, but I've been washing my hands a lot. I did it before I touched these tomatoes, so we're clean, don't worry. I just crush this up so that it gets to be a consistent texture. And if anybody's got tomato questions, bring it up. I'm using California tomatoes. You can use Italian tomatoes, you can use whatever you want. San Marzano tomatoes are fine, but again, San Marzano is a, specific, is a specific town. And if the tomatoes are grown in the vicinity of that town in the Agro Sarnese, the Agro Sarnese no region of Southern Italy, then they are eligible for DOP certification. But DOP certification just means that the tomatoes are picked by hand, they're very gentle. They're very delicate. Uh, the American palate actually prefers a little bit of a sweeter tomato most of the time. I love a great Neapolitan pizza. Do not misunderstand me. But I just find that that's a kind of an overrated tomato. You don't need it. Keep your eye on this sauce. I'm going to go do a hand wash. Sauce is done. You let that sit in the fridge, it's going to just taste even better. A little bit of basil in there because they always put a couple of basil leaves in these cans of tomatoes. They originally started doing that because they cut down on that import tariff. Importing tomatoes from Italy was expensive. It was a 100% tariff. But when they started adding basil leaves, it, it turned from being a tomato to a preparation for a sauce. 7% tax. So way cheaper, easier to do. 
That's why you find in the grocery store basil in the can. That's our sauce. Let's do a little maintenance on the table. We'll check on our dough. Dough has had a good six minutes to hang out. During that six minutes, it relaxed. I was putting a lot of pressure on it with my hand. Now it relaxed. Now I press. And I see it just gently pops back. Great. Let's give it a couple more turns on the table. I can feel that it's not super soft and springy. It's because I'm using some old dough or old flour. But I can tell you, after a couple of turns, ooh, it's feeling good. Yeah. Okay. Looks smoother. This is no trick. I'm not editing. It's a Facebook Live video. This is a laptop camera. This just happened. Real pizza dough. That's it. That's it. So we'll let this hang out for a couple minutes. Then we're going to chop it into two. Remember I said this is two doughs? Let's prep our containers. Real easy. A little bit of oil, a little bit of oil. We're creating a little coating in the inside of the container just so the dough doesn't stick to it. I got a little bit extra oil on my hand, so let's wipe it on the lid. Why not? Just a little. All right, we're done. Put that away for another day. Now, let's cut this sucker in half. I'm just gonna use that spatula that I used before, because why not? I'm eyeballing this, but you know what? We have a scale, we may as well use it. On the scale, I'm seeing that the dough weighs 584 grams, 292. 292 is half of that. So let's try to get a 292 gram dough ball. If I get this, I win a prize, bonus points. 292, let's find out. 303, come on. 295, okay, I'm happy with that. 289, fine. Stealing a little bit and putting it out of there. My friend Mark Bello, who owns this pizza school in the Lower East Side, pizzaschool.com, he calls that donation. That ain't no April Fools. All right, potentially the most important part of the whole process turning this into a ball. You don't just smush it, no. You take it smooth side up, and you put your thumbs on the edge, and you just pull it back and smush it against itself. Then you turn it 90 degrees, and you do the same thing. You do that a couple more times. And when you start to see that the top looks smooth, you pull all the stuff on the bottom and you pinch it shut. You really want to get fancy, you go on the table and you do one of these. Same deal.
two dough balls. Pop them in the fridge. You use them in one to three or four days. You just keep an eye on them. Like yesterday, I put dough balls that look just like this into the fridge. Today, it looks like this. Good news. We're going to use one of these. We're going to make a pizza. Let's take a quick break so I can put this in the fridge. Break over. All right. Let's jump into this. We got our dough. We got our sauce. Dirty bowl. What else we need? Cheese. I've got two different kinds of cheese. I've got fresh mozzarella. I've got low moisture mozzarella. Low moisture is the stuff that you shred, covers the whole pie. Fresh mozzarella is the stuff, it's kind of like a fancy pizza margarita. What do you want me to make? Fancy fresh, New York style low moisture, or combo? Give me the answer in the comments, and then, then you'll, we'll know what we're making. Whatever, whatever you guys want me to eat is basically what it is. Ah. Steven, do you put sugar in the sauce is his question. I do not, but it depends on the tomato. If you taste the tomato and it tastes good, you don't need to add anything. So sugar is in there to cut the acidity. This right now, let's see. It just tastes good. I might have put a little too much salt in it. Try to add some more of the tomato water. But yeah, short answer, Stephen. I'm not putting any sugar in there. Everybody's saying combo. The more cheese, the better. Let's do it. Okay. So, wow, I'm going to open both of these, huh? All right, this is my last mozzarella. Might have to actually go out to a store. This Bel Gioioso has a little thing that says easy open. It's not easy to open. I always have to get the scissors out. So I don't know if you heard in the background, but my oven just told me that it is warm enough. So uh, there we go. You always want to take it out of this package because there's a lot of liquid in it. I'm pouring it out. If I get too much liquid on this, it's going to make the pizza a soupy mess. So I like to lay out all the little pieces of mozzarella standing up so that they drain down. I'll show you a close-up in a second. Take a look. Just so all the liquid puddles down in the center. Next up, the low moisture mozzarella with another easy peel that's not that easy. I guess they don't make it for you to use when you're covered in tomato sauce. All right, we got a block of that. Let's do a quick shred. Fresh mozzarella is juicy. You don't want to use too much. Low moisture mozzarella is salty. You got to be careful with that. So for our pie, I'm going to make it a bed of fresh mo of uh, low moisture mozzarella, and then we'll put the the fresh on top.
low moisture, fresh. All right. The last cheese we're going to do when this comes out of the oven, Parmigiano Reggiano. But we'll wait till after it comes out. All right. As promised, only a couple minutes after I promised it was going to happen, let's stretch a dough. First step is to make sure your work surface is clean. You run your hands over it, you'll know if there are any wet spots. If there's a wet spot, that's not good. It means your dough is going to stick. Next step up, you got to remember, flour is our friend. The dough is sitting here, looking fresh. But if I touch it, I'm going to stick to it. So we get a little bit of flour. I use semolina flour. You can use whatever flour you want. The dough probably doesn't care. I just coat it so that I don't stick to it. You really want to use as little flour as possible because if it sticks to your dough and burns, it tastes gross. So you turn it over and it pops right out. And remember, when you touch your dough, you don't want to squeeze it. It's filled with all this gas from the last two days of rising. So we want to maintain all that. Great. Even though I just put more flour on there, I'm not going to use that flour. I'm going to brush that flour off. Because if I start using that flour, it's going to be a little bit funky. So get ready. And on, on the dough, I've got flour. I've turned the top of the dough over. So the part that's facing up right now used to be the bottom. I want that. I'll try to do this as clearly as possible. Step one. We give ourselves a little bit of a perimeter around the outside. About one finger's width. It's like a little piece of ravioli. Next step, you start pushing, not out, down. I'm pushing all the gases down, which makes them move out. I'll turn it over once. I never touch the very, very edge. Because that very, very edge is going to be what they call the cornicione. The cornicione is the very, very edge crust. Now, at this point of the mix, I got a few options. I can do this move where I put a little bit more flour on the table. And I do this. When you do this, you just touch the outside. You don't move around. You just stand still. Or I got an option where I can do this. Either way, when you put the dough back down, don't want to put it back in your pile of, of flour. Final thing that you could possibly do, you get it to hang over the edges of your knuckles. And you simply turn it from one hand to another. I'm not even pulling it. I'm letting gravity do all the real pulling. That's it. Pizza dough. Real simple. I just broke one of my own rules. I started touching it after I put it down. When you put it down... Just stop touching it. Do you grow your own herbs in your apartment? Any tips on hydroponic basil? I'm not growing my own herbs right now, but sorry. Yeah, somebody said childproof mozzarella. Thank you. You're right. It's true. All right. Now, I'm going to build the pizza on the table, and then I'm going to move it onto a peel. 
that's your peel. It's this one's metal. If I build on a metal peel, I'm probably going to uh, uh, stick to the peel. I have a wooden peel, but it doesn't fit in this up. Believe me, this whole thing is quite a dance. Let's get ready for the tomato. First thing I'm going to do is a little trick that I have. I put a little bit of oil on the dough. That's going to help prevent the dough from getting soggy. The oil is like a little protective coating. Now the uh, dough won't get too soggy once I put the tomato down on it. Pick up a spoon, maybe a spoon and a half of sauce. Put it right in the middle. And using the bottom of the spoon, you just go out. And that's it. Next up, we'll get that mutz. Grab it with two hands, and you go around the outside. Then down the bottom, then back up. Do it however you want. This is just how I find I like to do it. And I'm not covering it with too much. Not going overboard because this cheese is going to melt down. All right, finally, fresh, fresh mozzarella. With this stuff, I like to rip it in half. I'm going to cut this into six slices, so I'm using six bits of mozzarella. And a little bit in the center. All right. This step is the hard part. We've got to trust that the pizza is going to move. I push a little bit of this flour onto the peel just to give it a little coating. And now I'm going to go right underneath the thing. Now I'm not, I'm not going to push and lift. I'm just going to push. It's on the peel. Good, good, good. All right. I got to go across the room and put it into the oven, okay? Then we got to wait about two, three, two and a half to three minutes. And then you watch me eat it. Cleaning off all the extra flour that's stuck on the peel. Don't need it. So, while that's in the oven, I can't go too far from it, but I can definitely answer any questions. Oh, that herb question from Sandy was the last question. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I'm going to scroll up and see what's up. Talked about the sugar. Talked about the red oven. Cornmeal. I think we got a lot of these questions answered. If you have any, please drop them right in here. This is the moment. Let's actually go over to the oven. I know it's kind of loud over there. That's why I put it all the way over there, but let's go and see it. So this oven is... High temperature oven. It looks like a toaster oven, but it's super high temperature oven. Uh, that's why it's whizzing right now. We were about a minute into the bake. The edge of the crust is probably starting to pop. Probably popped already. The outside is going to start to char pretty soon. 
I gotta watch. When a lot of steam starts coming out of there, I might have to turn it around. If you're baking at home on a pizza stone, that's great. Pizza stone's probably one of the best things you can do inside the house. There's also ways to do it in a skillet. I hear a sizzle. Hold on. I gotta tell you, it smells awesome. I hope you've ordered some pizza because if you're sitting here watching this and not about to eat pizza, something you're in trouble. I just turned a little switch that's gonna give it a little bit more heat on top. I want some of that moisture to cook off. It's looking a little soupy. I, I hate to say it, but I think that I think I put a little too much cheese. Tomato sauce was a little bit on the wet side. Yeah, great news for y'all. Came out awesome. I just want to get a little landing spot ready. Pretty good. Let's dress it up. Yeah, little quickie on top. This, my friends, is a pizza. Let's look at the bottom. It looks good. If you're not into that char, it's okay. It just means we probably can't be friends. I love that char. I love the, the whole thing. If you're, um, people are talking about bake temperatures, just keep in mind the lower the temperature, the longer the bake, the drier the crust. If you like it crunchy, 450, great. If you like it softer and more pliable, you want a higher temperature. So it all depends. I like to bake at 500, 550 if I can get my oven to 550. Um, and then if you put it on a baking sheet in your regular oven, that's fine. It's just going to take a little longer to bake. And I would let the dough sit on the baking sheet for a couple of uh, maybe like 20 minutes just so it starts to rise a little bit then bake it for like three minutes pull it out top it and then finish it in a cookie sheet you just because the cheese is going to melt fast the dough is not going to break down all that fast. it's not going to bake all that fast especially if it's cold so i gotta take a picture of this Because to me, this looks great. I'm also going to take a picture right next to this thing because it's trippy. All right, I'm going to cut this up and start eating. If anybody has any questions, go ahead and ask. Um, once again, my name is Scott Wiener. I run a company called Scott's Pizza Tours uh, in New York City. And we do tours of famous pizzerias. I also run this nonprofit called Slice Out Hunger. If you go to sliceouthunger.org, you can donate, and we will send pizza to hospitals and care centers all around the country that are fighting the pandemic. I mean, I know I just keep showing you this pizza. Sorry. But I'm also not sorry.
Okay. We got drippy cheese. Looking good. We got a good bake on the side. Underside looks rocking. Awesome. Awesome. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Now I'm grossly eating pizza on a Facebook video. If you have questions, hit me up. My email address is on, you go to scottspizzatorch.com. There's a little thing that says contact. Just send an email. Say, hey, I was watching the Bayport Blue Point Library situation. I got questions. Thanks a lot for hanging out. And please go to sliceouthunger.org. Make a donation. Thanks for hanging out. And this video will, will be here on the library website, so on their Facebook page. Come check it out.